Hey everybody, welcome back. So today is the day, thanks to George for tweaking me about it, is the day I'm going to start my mythical series on printing nylon filament on the Ender 3 printer. And you're looking at my two Ender 3s. This is the one that we're going to use to print nylon on it. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I have an all-metal hot end. And if you're interested, go back and look at my previous video. This is like a $7 all-metal hot end. It has the McEwen Flexi Plus extruder on it. And again, there is a video on video review on that and installing it. So go back and watch that if you're interested. Uh, it is the firmware is flash to stock Ender to stock Marlin with the Ender 3 enhancements. And I also have replaced the bulb type thermistor, clamp and thermistor with a screw and thermistor that is reliable up to um, 300 degrees Celsius. It has some other minor modifications on it as well. None of those should affect printing in nylon. I do have a mirror bed on it. And I don't know what the later Ender 3, both these Ender 3s are early versions. This one over here is one of the very first batch they sent out. This one here is the next batch, and it has some minor improvements. They both came with this horrible print service that basically didn't hardly work at all. I have put mirrors on both of them, and I use hairspray. I've never really tried anything else because I've never really had a reason to try anything else. This works good for every material I've ever tried on it, including nylon. So, those are the modifications we've made. I am using... Tallman, can't really see it there. Tallman, can't really see it there at all, can you? Tallman, this is the Tallman Bridge Nylon. I have another roll of nylon, but it's still closed, so we're going with the Tallman Bridge Nylon. And um, yeah, that's it. Pretty much all you need. And you, all you need is any decent all-metal uh, feed mechanism. You don't have to have the McEwen Flexi Plus. I like it. I recommend it. But anything that's better than the stock Ender plastic one. And again, I don't know what the current shipping models are coming with. But if it's the same plastic ones that came on this, it's garbage. So that's the printer. Let's go over to Cura and let's look at the settings. Okay, we're back and we're looking at my settings in Cura. And you may remember last year I made a video where I tested the different temperature, t different filament types in the Arizona sun. I printed some S hooks and just hung weights from the hooks and left them in the sun for a while. Must have been about a year ago because it was in the summer and it's summer here again. So I have printed some nylon, so I have some initial settings to play with. And this is what we're going to look at today. And so I've got using a layer height of 0.2. I'm using a, uh, a line width of 0.5. This is something one of the gurus over at um, Ultimaker, Cura, told me to try out when I was having trouble. And I tried it and I found it worked really well for me. Other people have tried it and it has not worked for them. So take it with a grain of salt if you try it. Most of this is going to be pretty standard. 0.8 wall thickness, wall line count 2, top layers, bottom layers 3, Lines for pad, top, bottom pattern, fill gaps everywhere, filter out tiny gaps, Z seam alignment, sharpest corner, and hide seam, which does not really work well for me sometimes, but I'm never going to give up. So infill density for the parts I'm going to print, the initial ones, is I've got set at 50. It might be a little overkill, but I want to I want to make sure they're strong because I like to make parts that can be used for things that aren't just decorations. I mean, I like to make decorations too, but I like to make usable things. So we're going to go with 50 for now. Like I say, it's probably overkill. Infill pattern is lines. Pretty much this is all just standard stuff. I'm using a printing temperature of 265 degrees Celsius. This is where I ran into problems when I printed before. With the stock Ender 3 firmware, the printer was doing some pretty flaky things when I'd get try and print that high. I believe that is the maximum that Creality says the Ender 3 can print stock. My 2 did not like that. Your newer models may, they've changed boards and a number of things on the newer models. Yours may print it that fine. And also, I don't know if they've changed it, but my 
early Ender 3s had no heat overrun protection. So when you're pushing the maximum, I would not turn my back on the printer with no type of, of thermal runaway protection. So we're going at 265. I told you the changes I've made, an all metal hot end and a thread in brass thermistor. And um, I'm going with a build plate temperature of 70. 50 will probably work, but 70 the nylon just seems to adhere to better. And some of the pieces I'm going to print kind of, you know, don't have a lot of surface sitting on the bed. So we're going with 70. Flow is at 100. Attra retraction is enabled. Now here is where some of the changes I've had to make for the all-metal hot end. All-metal hot ends don't like a lot of retraction. It tends to cause nozzle clogs. And it doesn't matter whether you bought your Chinese all-metal hot end from directly from China or through one of the guys who buy them from China, add customer, you know, after sale support. It doesn't matter. They're all going to do this. So retraction is set at two millimeters. That's the maximum that I can use without getting nozzle clogs. So if yours is still set to four or five and you're getting nozzle clogs with your all metal hot end, back it off to one and then work it up slowly until you find the maximum you can get before you clog your nozzle. Or you may just want to go and stick with one or 1.5 because clearing nozzle clogs is not exactly a lot of fun. Retraction speed I have set to 40 and retraction prime speed I have set to 20. That's important with an all metal hot end. Print speed I've slowed from my normal from my normal 50 or 60 with PLA down to 40. Wall speed is half of that, of course. Travel speed is 120. Initial layer speed is 20. Uh, I've, I've enabled acceleration control because one of my Ender 3s, and I think it's the actual newer one of the two, but it might be the older one, I kind of forget. It does not like a lot of acceleration and jerk. So I have lowered the acceleration down to 300, and I have lowered the jerk down to 5 because I was getting these clunking noises and it would skip and then I would have a layer shift. So that's why you're seeing those settings there in my Cura. And I'll put, I'll put a link to these Cura settings below. If I forget, remind me nicely, please. <laughs> um, the rest of this is pretty standard here, except for print cooling is turned off. We do not want print cooling with nylon. At least that's what I've been told. I have not been using it and we'll see what the results look like. I don't need any support for the parts I'm generating. Uh, my build plate adhesion is just a skirt. The, um, the mirror and hairspray do not need a raft. I have never needed a raft. I think I used a raft for that giant Hulk I printed just because he was so tall and had such a, a tiny amount of foot space sitting on, the, on the, the build plate. But that's all I've ever, I think all I've ever used a raft for. I hate them. Anyway, those are the settings. And the first thing we're going to print, let me show it to you. I'm going to open it up. Yep, let's go open recent. And this is a half inch national pipe thread adapter. This adapts female to male and it requires no support. This is something I got from Thingiverse. And yes, the link will be below. Let me zoom in on it a little bit. And you'll swoops, and you'll see it. That is all it is. And I'm going to use this. I have something else I'm going to make out of nylon, and we're going to put nylon to the test. So let's print this.
Okay, we're back, and as you saw, we printed two parts, one on one Ender 3 and one on the other. The one on the oldest Ender 3 with the stock hot end is made out of PLA, this purple PLA, and if you take a look at it, quality is actually pretty darn nice. Is it 100% perfect? No, it's not. But for a $179 printer, and this thing will print like this all day and all night long, I got to say, I'm very pleased with the Ender 3. I've said it before. It takes some work. Now I am dropping it. it took some work. But um, once you get it working right, they are they are really good for what you pay for them. So here's the one we printed out of nylon on the newer Ender 3, newer by, you know, six months, that has the all-metal hot end. And as you can see, the threads are nice and sharp. Everything looks good, and you'll see a fine spider web of stringing inside. That's more due to the retraction settings required for the all-metal hot end than it really, I think, is the nylon, although some of it might be the nylon. It's stringier than PLA. There's no doubt about that. But um, probably there's a little string here where it, where it, um, where it ended. But that's certainly usable just the way it is. I mean, I would clean the inside up. But other than that, it certainly is usable. So now you're asking yourself, now that I have these two printed, what am I going to do? Well, first things first. I'm going to test them to destruction. Let's do that right now. So let's start with our PLA part. And I'm just going to grab it by the end. And I'm just going to squeeze. And it's cracking right there. That's the cracking point. And you'll see it has cracked all along here. And it does not return to its, its shape. And um, if I were to squeeze it again, that would probably be the end of it. Yep, it is all broken off. Oops, can you see it's all broken off around there. And this part is going to be used where there's going to be heat and a lot of vibration. And I really don't think PLA is the correct material for it. I printed it just for the heck of it. And um, if we were to attempt to crush it completely, then we would, of course, get the total failure of the part like that. So let's do the same thing with the nylon part. Let's, um, let's grab it at the end like we, did the end like we did the PLA part, and let's squeeze it about like that. There we are right there. And there's no failure at all in that part. It, it deformed and it um, it's ready to bounce right back. Can even um, if it sat for if it sat for a while, it would probably completely return to its original shape or very close. And then we'll grab it like this, like we did the other one, and we'll squeeze it that way. And again, you'll see no failure. And let's do the same thing. Let's grab it and let's completely crush it. Ready? Here we go. That's smashed flat. And again, you'll see it is not broken or deformed in any way. Well, I mean, it's deformed, but there are no cracks. There is no layer separation. Um, <laughs> I got to say, I'm pretty darn pleased with that. I don't think that I can beat that. I think I've got my settings right. I think the temperature of 265 is very, very good. It's 70 degrees. It sticks well to the bed with hairspray. And um, so now you're going to ask again, okay, Chuck, where do you go from here? In fact, I might even I might even use this one for the next part. Where do we go from here? Well, you know, I wish I was some cool dude making, um, like Johnny Q90, making cool little engines. And I could make an impeller blade or something like that. But I'm not. So... In the next video, this is just one part of what I'm going to make next, a part that's going to require some heat and vibration to survive for very long. And just to give you an idea, guys, where we're going in the next video, I'll sneak this in. And I'm going to leave it right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I have provided you some quality information. Please like and subscribe and hit notifications, and I will put links to everything I have talked about today below. Hope you all have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.